I've been sick for the last couple of days. Um, today I finally got out of the house and got some work done and stuff. Um, but yeah, I've been laid up with with one of those back to school, you know, viruses and stuff to go around. Um, sure enough, first day of first day of uh, the semester, I caught something from somebody and it laid me up for a couple of days. Um, while I was laid up. I decided to uh, reopen uh, the book that I had been reading, which is George St. Pierre's um, The Way of the Fight. And I had read the introduction uh, previously and uh, the book one. And so while I was sick, I read um, book two, which is the ground book, um, which features uh, his sensei uh, Medu, his name is Medu, Christophe Medu, and the book, uh, the ground book is called Mentor, um, so Medu being his mentor, and this, this part of the book is really about um, GSP transitioning from being a martial arts enthusiast to becoming a mixed martial arts fighter. And so um, one of the themes that goes throughout this part of the book, uh, one, of the, one of the themes that, um, that uh, he's writing about and discussing um, is fear there's a lot of fear involved in, in fighting, of course. Um, it does go into some detail about, you know, some of the things that, that uh, Yadu and GSP did to, to train. Yadu was, um, he was a fighter himself. Uh, GSP used to go watch him fight. Um, and he sought him out uh, purposely to train him um, to become an MMA champion and uh, so they do accepted him but really put him to the put him to the test and I don't even know if I'm saying if I'm pronouncing this video's name correctly but really put um, George to the test like he, he, he tried to break him he tried to really challenge him he tried to run him out of steam and he put him into situations where he knew he would be intimidated and scared. Um, constantly putting him into uh, fights in training with martial artists that were known in the region and that were successful uh, fighters. And uh, they do have confidence in, in George that he would be able to uh, Overcome all these opponents' challenges, but George himself didn't know that, so he had a lot of fear facing to do. And so this this chapter really kind of there's kind of like three interwoven themes in this chapter, which is fear, risk, and innovation. And the fear is the greatest component of it. And basically, you know, he says that. Fear is going to take you in one of two ways. You know, either it's going to make you freeze. Um, the, the fear is going to control you. That you're, you know, you're going to be focused on the subject of the fear, or you're going to be able to um, utilize that fear because really the purpose of the fear and the adrenaline and all of that, the purpose of it. As he, as he describes, is to bring you to safety. That's why you get it. You know, you get that, you get that fear, and you get that adrenaline, and it empowers you. Actually, if you're able to use that power to do amazing things, you know, people who are in that state can lift cars and carry humans and these kind of things. So it almost can make you superhuman, in a sense. 
but in order for that to happen, you really have to know how to use it or have a have a you either have to have a uh, like an instinct on how to use it or uh, you have to train yourself to know how to use it. You know, but most of the time people facing the fear are more like the deer that's caught in the headlights. Um, they know that something is coming to hurt them in there, and they're frozen. Um, and it's no good. So he talks about that. You know, one of the other things that caught my eye um, something noteworthy about the fear is that you have to have fear in order to be courage in order, for, in order for somebody to be courageous the fear has to be there uh, because you know of course like the like the, the, the what what he says is that you know you got two kinds of soldiers that go into battle you got these guys that want to fight and aren't afraid and they're crazy and then you've got these other people that are afraid but they go to fight anyway, and they're courageous. So in order to even get to have, you know, to, dis to display courage, there has to be a fear. So the fear is good, but only if you know how to use it. You have to be able to take risks. Um, and you have to be constantly innovating. These are things that he says, you know, it's going to make a... Uh, successful person or successful fighter uh, with his fighting you know he knows that if he stops if he, if he gets to like he where he has his a style say for instance and he gets too comfortable and he doesn't keep innovating and changing up and learning it um, then people are going to study him and the, his opponents are going to study him figure him out and then it's going to be done in order to keep being successful, he has to keep being a learner and keep innovating. And he talks about um, keeping this kind of a mind like a white belt, where you're, you're you're in that learning mode and there's everything still to learn and everybody's still to learn from. Um, he also talks uh, about a uh, Japanese concept. Kaizen, I think it's called, and this is the notion that you keep um, incrementally developing yourself over time, and that's the preferred practice, because as soon as you have stasis, it's just like that deer in headlights again, you're stuck, and this is the thing about taking risks. You know, he points out that very successful people sometimes they get to a they'll, they'll have their success and then they'll have their model of how to do how to have that success and they'll keep following that same model and it won't continue to be successful and what they don't realize is that what brought them to that success was not that particular model but their their um, practice of being innovative and it kind of reminded me of like, uh, like, like Bill Gates with Windows and computers, you know, how he invented this awesome thing, this awesome technology, and then, but then has stuck with that model and hasn't been such an innovator since. And you know, as a result, the, the success already peaked. And other people are climbing, climbing beyond now. So, these are the things that he wrote about in this chapter um, that I found useful to take note of and reflect on and such. I think there's lots to gain from considering how to how to uh, work with fear, harness it to your to your advantage, but also, you know, that you have to be willing to put yourself 
into situations that are frightening in order sometimes to uh, to develop and certainly to display any courage. Another, there's just one little last note that I wanted to make of something that I found of interest in this, in this uh, part of the book. And that was his description of when he lost to Matt Sarah. And it was just eating him up inside that he lost all he could think about. And then one of his friends told him that uh, he should carry a brick around with the name Sarah on it. Carry it everywhere he goes, all day long, all night, everywhere. So he would recognize, you know, how he's carrying this weight for no reason. Um, so he, he took he took his friend's advice and he started carrying this brick around. And he says, you know, you do recognize that this brick gets heavier and heavier the longer you carry it around and stuff. Why am I carrying this brick? And then, uh, and then one day he naturally transitioned to where his thoughts were no longer on Sarah. They were on his potential next fight with um, Josh Costa. And so, at that point, he knew that uh, he had overcome that uh, obsession, and he went to the bridge and tossed his brick in the river. But I thought it was a neat exercise to, that he would go through. Um, it might bring some interest in like, consciousness to what a person is doing when they're obsessing on something like that needlessly. Um, you know, certainly there's, there's things that I should be carrying bricks for. <laughs> and maybe it would compel you to, to drop those things sooner, I don't know. Might be, might be something I'll experiment with at some point. Anyway, so that was book two, and I don't know when I'm going to crack over book three. I'm not really having as much fun with this GSP book as I thought initially I was going to have, given the quality of the introduction, but um, like I just pointed out, there are some little gems, beneficial gems in there, so that's it for now. I will finish the book, so we'll see when I get to book four, book three.